हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द करियर सोच तो दिस न्यू सीरीज एच जीरो फाइव एंड माइक्रो कंट्रोल सीरीज दैट वी हैव स्टार्टेड ड्यूरिंग द एग्जाम यू विल गेट अ क्वेश्चन लाइक डिस्क्राइब द रैम इंटरनल मेमोरी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ एच जीरो फाइव एंड माइक्रो कंट्रोल सो दिस इज ए पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन वी आर गोइंग टू सी इन टू डेज लेक्चर नो सो एज यू कैन सी ऑन द स्क्रीन दिस पर्टिकुलर स्लाइड विल गिव यू क्लियर आइडिया हाउ एक्सैक्टली द रैम इन साइड वन ट्वेंटी बाइट ऑफ रैम इन साइड एच जीरो फाइव वन माइक्रो कंट्रोलर इज अरेज सो इट्स एड्रेस स्टार्ट फ्रॉम जीरो जीरो एंड हाइएस्ट एड्रेस द लास्ट एड्रेस वन ट्वेंटी एथ बाइट विल बी एड्रेस एज सेवन एफ सो प्रिसाइजली फ्रॉम जीरो जीरो टू सेवन एफ दीज आर द एड्रेसिस ऑफ दिस रेजिस्टर्स नाउ देर आर वन ट्वेंटी एट बाइट्स और वन ट्वेंटी एट रेजिस्टर्स ऑफ 8 bit uh, length which are actually there termed as a ram okay so out of this 128 byte resistors four or 32 resistors the first 32 resistors now address starts from 00 to 1f so these 32 resistors are divided into four resistor banks now in case of 8051 Eight resistors are clubbed together, and we call these resistors as a bank. Okay, so there are four banks: resistor bank zero, which is at the bottom; resistor bank one; resistor bank two; and resistor bank three. So each bank has got eight resistors, and these eight resistors are termed as R zero, R one. R two, R three, R four, and so on till R seven. So as you can see on the slide, there are four banks: bank zero, bank one, bank two, bank three. Each bank has got resistors ranging from R zero to R seven, and at, there are addresses given uh, just near to it. There are addresses also given. So total number of resistors are thirty-two divided into four banks. Each bank has got eight resistors. Now default bank. When the eight zero five one is turned on, the default bank is resistor bank zero. That means zero zero to seven zero zero to seven zero seven. These resistor addresses are nothing but default bank. Now, if you want to change the bank, you can do so. Now, suppose you don't want resistor bank one and you want to use some other resistor bank, then that is very much possible by programming bits of PSW that is program status word register. Now this PSW register it was there in eight eighty five also. Now here also you have PSW register. There are two bits. There are two bits D three and D four which you program and if you program it appropriately then you will be able to select bank other than R zero. So as you can see on see on the slide register bank zero these two bits are zero zero. That means PSW point four D four bit and D three bit. Now D four bit and D three bit. Uh, then it is zero zero. So you have bank zero. Now if you want to go for a bank one, it is zero one. If you want to go for a bank two, it is one zero. And if you want to go for a bank four, it is one one. So you can program these bits. And accordingly, you will be able to select a particular bank. Now you can use simple instructions such as set B, and then the PSW point three uh, and PSW point four, and using which this thing you can select a particular bank. So this is about uh, your your th first thirty two register. Now after thirty two, that means you go from twenty. To two F, these resistors are bit addressable RAM. These resistors are called as, or this particular area from two zero to two F. This particular area is called as bit addressable RAM. Now, whenever you access RAM, it can be bit addressable or it can be byte addressable. What is the difference between the bit addressable and the byte addressable? When you say it is a byte addressable, you access the entire byte. Now eight bit is equal to one byte, right? So you will have to write the entire byte, or you will have to read entire byte if it is a byte addressable. But if it is a bit addressable, you can program each bit of the register. For example, see this is a register which has got eight bits. 
d0 to d7. Now, if it is a byte addressable, all these bits at a time will be written or you will have to read all these bits at a time. But if it is a bit addressable, any of the particular bit can be set or reset. Rest of the memory that is from 30 to 7F, this area is available to you as scratch pad RAM or it is also called as a general purpose RAM. So this is, the, 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 this is how first 128 bytes of RAM is divided in 8051. Now moving further, now this 128 bytes of RAM which is available to you can be addressed by direct addressing mode or indirect addressing mode. Now you have more 128 bytes of RAM other than this 128 you have further 128 bytes which is reserved for SFRs. SFR stands for Spatial Function Registers. So in this lecture we will not cover SFRs, in some other lecture we will cover all different types of SFRs. So for time being you just remember that further 128 bytes of RAM is reserved for spatial functions registers. Obviously all these 128 uh, bytes are not used as SFRs. There are some bytes which are not at all used as a SFR. You can use as a general purpose memory. but you have to mention that this further 128 bytes of RAM is reserved for SFRs, okay. So 128 plus 128 total 256 bytes of RAM you will find in all the modern variants of 8051 microcontroller. Now in some microcontrollers you will further get 128 bytes which can only be addressed by indirect addressing mode. First 128, direct and indirect. Second 128, only direct mode of addressing. And extra 128 byte, if any of the variant of uh, 8051 has, then that can be addressed only by indirect mode of addressing. Now, if in the exam question is asked, like what, how many, what is the size of the internal RAM, the answer could be 256 bytes okay 128 which is directly available by indirect and indirect addressing mode and 128 further which is actually used for SFRs. Now moving further we talked about RAM now what about ROM because every microcontroller will have RAM random access memory and ROM which is read only memory inside the chip. In a microprocessor, that may not be the condition. But in microcontroller, you need to have RAM as well as ROM inside the chip. Now, obviously, as you know, ROM is also called as a program memory because that is where we store our code. That is where we store our program. So this 80, typical 8051 microcontroller has got 4K ROM embedded inside the chip. 4 kilobyte of ROM. Now, as you have already studied that to 8051 we can interface maximum 64 KB memory. That means you can have external memory connected to 8051 uh, that is maximum is up to 64 KB. So 4 KB ROM is there inside. You can have 60K more ROM connected from outside. So total maximum 64 you can go or you have other option to connect full 64 KB memory externally to this 8051 microcontroller. But since in this lecture, we will not see that interfacing because we are today discussing about the internal memory organization of 8051 microcontroller. So in, in case of 8051 internal memory organization, it's very clear that you have ROM as well as we have RAM. ROM is 4K and 256 bytes of RAM. And this is what you need to answer in your exam. So I hope the things are very clear. If you have any doubt, I will definitely answer in the comment section. You can ask your questions in the comment section and, and keep watching the coming videos on 8051 microcontroller, clearing all your doubts. Thank you so much.